A lot of people are amazed by the very high performance and optimization of Apple's mobile devices like iPhones and iPads, especially when compared to other high-end Android devices. All of this is possible in part thanks to Apple's custom CPUs, like the A13 chip used in the iPhone 11 series and the latest iPhone SE, and the A12Z used in the latest iPad Pro. These chips are called SOCs, System on a Chip, which means that they contain in one single chip several important components of a device. In the case of a phone, there are components such as an ARM-based CPU, a GPU, a modem for wireless connectivity, a bunch of image and video processing units, some units for various sensors like gyroscopes and accelerometers, and in most phones today also an AI unit for machine learning tasks. All of this makes the hardware of a phone very complete, unless you miss some other stuff like the display because that wouldn't really make the device a phone anymore. Anyway, Apple has liked using their own chips in their mobile devices since the first iPhone and the first iPod Touch models, even though they aren't part of the A series, which was launched with the A4 chip in the iPhone 4 and first generation iPad. Up to the iPhone 5S, they reused Cortex chip designs from ARM Holdings. Then from the iPhone 6, they started designing chips all by themselves, paying fees only for the ARM architecture. They've always been very successful with these SOCs, while on the side of Macs in the last 5 years, if I'm not mistaken, they've struggled a lot to bring decent products without thermal issues, especially MacBooks. That is, in part, Apple's fault because they always want to put powerful hardware in a very slim case, and also Intel's fault, because for years they haven't managed to create new CPUs with a size smaller than 14 nanometers. But now Apple is preparing something big, the transition of Macs to their own SOCs. No more Intel, no more x86, no more thermal issues, no more AMD graphics, all made by Apple. Today is going to be a truly historic day for the Mac. Today we're going to tell you about some really big changes how we're going to take the Mac to a whole new level. The Mac has had three major transitions in its history. The move to PowerPC, the transition to Mac OS X, and the move to Intel. And now it's time for a huge leap forward for the Mac, because today is the day we're announcing that the Mac is transitioning to our own Apple Silicon. When they first announced the transition at WWDC 2020, I was quite surprised because, even though I read online about the rumors, I still thought that ARM CPUs couldn't perform like high-end desktop ones. But Apple seems very confident. This is an important step in the industry of desktop computing, because x86-based CPUs have existed since the late 70s and have dominated the PC market for decades. But on the other hand, this is Apple, they are used to change things around. For example, the first transition from the Motorola 68K series, used since the original Macintosh, to PowerPC in 1994. Then they transitioned from PowerPC to Intel in 2005. PowerPC processors were in part made by Apple and were risk-based, kinda like their current ARM silicon. But Intel seemed to offer more flexibility at the time with their future plans for the Mac, including the ability to run Microsoft Windows in dual boot. Back then the media was shocked, saying that this was a very risky move. Software developers were also concerned about having to recompile all of their apps and that the classic environment for running old Mac OS 9 software was not going to be ported to x86. Apple gave developers a transition kit consisting of a prototype Intel Mac with a beta of Mac OS X Tiger, Xcode and the Rosetta Universal tools for converting their software. Everything was fine, Mac sales didn't drop, app developers didn't kill themselves, planes didn't fall to the ground. Apple's plan was a complete success. That means that the current transition from Intel to ARM will also go smoothly with the current developer kit, which consists of a Mac Mini with an A12Z processor, we installed a beta of macOS Big Sur, Xcode and the Rosetta 2 and Universal 2 tools. What does all of this mean? Are future Macs going to be cheaper? Yeah, maybe. Are touchscreen Macs going to be a thing? Possibly. This is probably one of the reasons why they made a god-awful UI in Big Sur. But there's something about Apple Silicon that perplexes me. Are they going to lock down Mac users even more with all proprietary hardware? They like to tightly integrate hardware and software, reinforcing their already very close wallet garden, and trying to blur the line between desktops, notebooks, tablets and smartphones. The first thing they'll do is dropping bootcamp forever, since Microsoft isn't really doing anything with Windows on ARM at the moment, unless Linux becomes popular because that runs on literally everything just fine, and because they want to sell it only pre-installed in devices and not separately anymore. Then they will pretty much kill the Hackintoshing community, because all non-Mac PCs run on x86, 
So in around 2 years there won't be any more Ankintoshes running the latest and greatest macOS. Only older versions which obviously aren't supported forever by Apple itself and by app developers. Their whole hardware is gonna be proprietary AF, giving users very little control than what they already have now, which isn't that much compared to desktop PCs and older iMacs and MacBooks. Another possible issue is the overall performance, because even if Apple is confident with their silicon, there could still be a possibility of the performance not really matching Intel-based Macs, at least in the first years. And the fact that there is no dedicated GPU could probably give a similar problem also for graphics. And what they showcased at WWDC was not a super new next-gen game. These are my thoughts on Apple Silicon and the transition of Macs from Intel to ARM. What do you think about it? Is this going to revolutionize the whole industry? Is it going to fail? We'll see what Apple will do with their new ARM-based Macs. By the way, did you know that I'm also on library? YouTube is not really as good as it was before. This is why I support alternatives like library. Go follow me there at GianmarcoGG03.